August 1977, and in the quiet fields of Ohio, something truly extraordinary is about to happen. The Big Ear Radio Telescope, a vast contraption of wires and metal sheets, sits scanning the heavens. Night after night, it listens, patiently for the faintest whispers from stars. Most of the time, it hears only the usual background hum of the cosmos. But then, for just 72 seconds, it catches something astonishing. A signal. A signal so unusual that one man poring over the data a few days later can hardly believe his eyes. He circles it in red pen and writes a single word beside it. Wow. But what exactly was the wow signal? Why has it puzzled astronomers, scientists and dreamers for nearly 50 years? And most intriguingly of all, could it really have been a message from another civilization? To begin answering those questions, let us look at what made this signal so unusual. The wow signal was detected at a frequency of 1420 megahertz, right on what scientists call the hydrogen line. Hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe, and it naturally emits radiation at this frequency. Many astronomers believe that if another civilization were trying to get noticed, they might choose this very spot on the spectrum, since it would be recognizable to anyone with even a modest grasp of physics. It is as if the cosmos itself set aside a universal calling channel. Equally striking was the signal strength. The Big Ear Telescope recorded its intensity as a sequence of numbers and letters. 6, Echo, Quebec, Uniform, Juliet, 5. At first glance, it looks like nonsense. But in fact, it maps how the signal rose, peaked, and fell across the telescope's observation window. It behaved just as a fixed point in the sky would, drifting across a beam as Earth rotated. And unlike the broad, noisy emissions we expect from stars, quasars, or galaxies, this one was narrow band, confined to less than 10 kilohertz. Such precision is not something nature often produces. It is, however, the hallmark of an artificial transmitter. And then suddenly, as it appeared, it was gone. Astronomers turned their instruments back to the same patch of sky again, and again, in the days and weeks that followed. But the signal never returned. In the decades since, despite the growing power of our telescopes and the persistence of our searches, nothing quite like it has ever been heard again. That one-time appearance is precisely what gives it its mythical status. Extraordinary, but unrepeatable. So what was it? A natural event of a kind we have yet to explain? A momentary burst of energy from an unknown cosmic source? A transmission from another world? Switched on only briefly, by chance coinciding with the instant Big Ear was listening? Or perhaps simply a quirk of the telescope's own technology? Capturing something once, but never again. Whatever the truth, the WOW signal remains a scientific riddle, balanced tantalizingly between the mundane and the extraordinary. If it was natural, it was unlike any natural phenomenon we know. If it was artificial, it may have been our first fleeting brush with another intelligence. And if it was something else entirely, it is a mystery still waiting to be solved. Now, of course, not everyone is ready to jump to aliens. Many scientists prefer to begin with natural explanations. Could the WOW signal have been a quirk of the cosmos? Something generated by a star or an exotic object out there in Sagittarius. Pulsars, for example, are famous for their bursts of radio waves, caused by rapidly spinning neutron stars sweeping their beams across space like a lighthouse bulb. Magnets are even more dramatic, with magnetic fields so intense that they can tear atoms apart. Both can produce incredibly powerful bursts, but they do so across a broad range of frequencies. Not in the razor-thin slice of the spectrum, the WOW signal appeared. Similarly, Supernova remnants light up the sky in radio waves after their cataclysmic explosions. But again, these are broadband signals that look very different from what was captured in the summer evening of 1977. Some experts have wondered about mesas, natural amplifiers of radio energy found in unusual cosmic environments. In principle, they can create narrow signals, but they are normally tied to very specific settings, like dense clouds of gas in star-forming regions, or atmospheres of dying stars. The WOW signal, however, does not align with those familiar patterns. And so we come to the tantalizing possibility that it may have been something transient. A one-off event from a cosmic phenomenon we do not yet understand. Could it have been a gamma ray burst or a flare from an unknown object? These possibilities remain speculative, but they are important reminders that the universe still holds surprises. Others have proposed stranger ideas, such as gravitational lensing. Imagine a massive object like a black hole bending and magnifying a faint radio source far behind it. For a brief instant, 
A signal that would normally be so weak to detect might flare into view. Intriguing, yes, but still speculative. And the real problem is this. No known natural source fits the wow signal exactly. Its strength is now abound in nature, and its one-time appearance continued to set it apart. Part of the mystery lies in the technology of the time. The Big Ear Telescope, which caught the signal, was an ingenious piece of engineering, but also a product of its era. Built in Ohio in the 1960s, it had no moving parts. Instead, it used the rotation of the Earth to sweep the sky through its field of view. This meant that the wow signal lasted no longer than 72 seconds. The time that it took the signal source to drift across the beam, it was a clever and stable system, but also a limited one. Big Ear could listen in two directions at once, thanks to its twin horns. But the wow signal only appeared in one. That left astronomers with a frustrating uncertainty about the exact location in the sky. And worse still, the telescope did not save the raw radio wave itself. Instead, it printed out numbers on paper, recording only the strength of the signal over time. Jerry Eamon's wow annotation was written on that very sheet. But because of this analog process, no one could later go back and reanalyze the waveform with modern tools. In other words, some of the most important details of the wow signal were lost forever. Since then, technology has leapt ahead. Today, arrays of giant dishes like the Very Large Array in New Mexico, or the Allen Telescope Array dedicated to SETI, can survey the sky with far greater precision. Data is now stored digitally, in staggering volumes, and computers armed with machine learning algorithms sift through it all to spot anomalies. Projects such as Breakthrough Listen are scanning millions of stars across a huge range of frequencies, listening not just for radio beacons, but also the other possible techno signatures, flashes of laser light, or even signs of unusual atmospheres on distant planets. What all this means is that if another wow signal appeared today, we would be far better equipped to study it. We could lock on, record the raw signal, and check it instantly from multiple observatories around the globe. We would know whether it was an artifact or our own technology, a trick of the cosmos, or something altogether more exciting. But in 1977, with big ears printouts and limited follow-up, that chance slipped away. And so the wow signal remains suspended between two worlds. Too sharp and too strange to be easily dismissed as natural, yet too fleeting to be confidently claimed as artificial. It is precisely this tension that has given it such an enduring power, both in science and the imagination of the public. So where does that leave us today? Nearly half a century after Jerry Amon scribbled wow on a strip of paper, far from faded into obscurity, the signal has become a beacon of science itself. It reminds us that the search for extraterrestrial intelligence is not just a flight of fancy, but a discipline grounded in curiosity, patience, and ever-improving technology. Today, new observatories like FAST in China, or MERCAT in South Africa, and the soon-to-be built square kilometer array are giving us sharper ears than ever before. Artificial intelligence scans oceans of data in real time, ready to pounce on the next anomaly. And projects like Breakthrough Listen are not just listening, but listening better, wider, and deeper than anyone in 1977 could have ever imagined. We may yet hear something like the wow signal again, and this time we'll be ready to capture it. Perhaps it was a fleeting quirk of the cosmos. Perhaps it was something more. Either way, the wow signal has already done its job. It inspired generations of scientists, brought the public along for the adventure, and sharpened our tools for exploring the universe. And who knows, the next wow signal may be waiting for us just around the cosmic corner. Thanks for watching.